I think that logos inherently, even if that's not your intention, it signals something to society or to the people around you that you have X amount of money because you can afford this type of bag. And I'm just not subscribing to that anymore. Now, the bags that I buy are the bags that I like. They don't just get displayed. For me at this time, it's never about the logo anymore. It's about like, does it fit my current lifestyle? Does it fit my current wardrobe? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we've got a really fun topic that we're gonna be talking about. And it is all about my updated luxury wish list. I did a 2023 luxury wish list, I want to say in March or April. And since that video, I have picked up quite a few things from that wish list and then removed a few things and added a few things. And we're going to be talking about all of those things in this video. So if you want to see that, then just keep on watching. By the way, if you're new to my channel and you don't know who I am, hi, hello, my name is Reza. I usually do videos around personal finances and navigating your life in your 20s and your 30s. So if you're into that type of content, make sure you're subscribed down below. I know I talk about personal finances quite a bit and a lot of it is like investing and savings and emergency funds debt repayments, like bills, all of those things. But I like this type of video because you guys can kind of see all of the things that I am saving up for and things that I wanna buy in the future, things that I'm kind of just like dreaming about. So I hope you like this video and that you find it interesting. So the way that we're gonna structure this video is that we're gonna talk about everything that I mentioned in that video three months ago. And then I'm gonna tell you what I've checked off and what has stayed and left the wish list. And then I'm also going to be talking about anything that I've added on new for the remainder of the year. So the first thing on that list was a Cartier Tank Louis watch. I have been saving up for this watch for quite a bit. I want to say like five or six months. I've been wanting it since last year. And I think I just, I knew that I wanted a watch that I will wear forever, kind of a very classic watch. And for the latter half of 2022, I actually had a dupe type of version of this watch. It's actually just a Seiko watch and it's a lot cheaper than the Cartier Tank. I love that watch and I realized that that was the shape type style of watch that I really liked, which kind of solidified to me that the Cartier Tank Louis would be a good investment for me. It was quite an expensive watch for what it was, but I know that this is something that I will forever wear. So I ended up buying it here in Vancouver back in April. I'm wearing it today actually. So this is the Cartier Tank Louis watch in the small version with the brown alligator strap with the gold hardware. I've been wearing this watch ever since I got it. The only time I really take it off, I mean, obviously, when I'm showering and when I'm sleeping, but also when I'm working out. I wear my Apple Watch when I'm working out, but for the most part, I have been wearing this watch and I feel like it was a really good investment. And I don't really see myself getting another watch for a really long time just because this is the dream watch for me. And I think that it goes with everything that I wear. It's just so classic and timeless. It is the Cartier Tank. I feel like everyone knows this style and copies this style. So yeah, I'm really happy that I got to check this off of the wish list. The next thing that I mentioned in that video is the Goyard Artois MM Tote. And again, I'm very happy to say that I checked this off the wish list. I actually have it here. So this is what the Artois MM looks like in the black. So it is just kind of like your typical tote. It's got leather on the bottom so that the bag doesn't sag when you're putting a lot of things in it. And also it's got a zipper, which the other Goyard totes don't really have. And then inside is this linen fabric and there's also a pocket over here. So I picked this up in Paris when I went back in May. Similar to the watch, I have been wearing it ever since I got it. I wear it when I'm at work, so five days a week, and I feel like cost per wear is pretty good on this just because it does fit quite a few things. I think that it was definitely a good investment. I'm glad I picked this up in Paris. I'm also glad that I got the Artois and not the Saint Louis. It just means that it's a better quality bag and that I'll have it for a long time in my collection. So I definitely think that this has been worth it. And then the other thing that I mentioned in that list was I wanted to get an Hermes Kelly or a Birkin bag. That has not happened yet. And I feel like this is something that will forever be on the wish list, but it's kind of like wishful thinking. First of all, that bag is like over $10,000. I think it's $11,000 in US. And it's just such an unattainable bag in the sense that like you have to play all of these 
or Mattis games and buying all of these things that you don't really need just for a chance to be offered a bag. I think at this point, I'm not playing the game. I haven't bought anything at Hermes in a really long time. I think the last thing that I bought were the shippery sandals, which I actually ended up selling. So I'm not like actively trying to get a Bergen or a Kelly for two reasons, because of the game that you have to play and also the price. Like the price is kind of ridiculous. Like I can understand that these bags are very well made and they're really hard to find and very sought after but for that price i feel like there's just so much other things that i can do with that money and i don't actually even have that money just laying around i mean i've got savings and all of that but i like just can't spend that much money on a handbag i will say that i do have a profile at my hermes store here in vancouver and that is on my wish list at hermes but who knows if or when i'm ever gonna get that call but yeah, it's just gonna be on the forever wish list, but we're not actively trying to get that. And the last thing that was on my previous wish list is the Hermes Evelyn. I thought a lot about this bag and I am officially removing it off the wish list. I think that I wanted it because I saw a like photo of someone styling it really well. And again, like I there's just I have so many bags already that I don't need another one just to have if that makes sense i think i'm at a point in my like handbag collection where i'm like very content with what i have so i've got something for every single occasion like i've got a crossbody bag a shoulder bag a summer bag a tote bag like i've got a pretty good collection already if you don't know my collection yet i'm gonna pop the video here where i rounded up all of my bags in one video but yeah i think i'm just very content with my handbags and i'm also leaning more towards handbags that are like quiet luxury i know that that's such a like buzzword right now but bags that don't really scream out a brand's name so the Evelyn for example has a perforated H at the front and I know that you can flip it so that you don't see that but I think like even the silhouette still like if you know Hermes you know that that's the Evelyn and I think I'm just at that point in my like handbag buying era that I don't need it to scream a brand's name like I don't have any Louis Vuitton bags or Gucci bags or anything with like monogram in it really I prefer it that way I think that logos inherently even if that's not your intention it signals something to society or to the people around you that you have X amount of money because you can afford this type of bag and I'm just not subscribing to that anymore and I will be the first to say that I used to buy bags for that reason I was all into Louis Vuitton I think like two years ago because it kind of signaled to other people like hey I can afford these things or I can afford Louis Vuitton but after like two to three years I just got over it like I've gotten to the point in my handbag collection journey that I'm able to actually buy the things that I want like I even got up to a point where I got Chanel medium classic flap and even then at that time when I got that I'm like that's it this like completes my whole collection until I realized like oh I don't actually use this bag and the only reason I got it was because of the CC logo and like that signal to people that I could afford this type of bag. It's it's been a it's been a wild journey for sure, but I think it's been very liberating for me because now the bags that I buy are bags that I like, like bags that I personally love and use and they don't just get displayed they're bags that i can like beat up and use type of type of bags and that's what i love about my collection and they're all practical they're all really well-made handbags and yes they're by big designers for me at this time it's never about the logo anymore it's about like does it fit my current lifestyle does it fit like my current wardrobe and yeah that's kind of like my stance on handbags right now so that I guess like a long-winded reason as to why I'm kind of not really into the Evelyn anymore so yeah those are the things that I have picked up for my wish list over the last couple months I checked off two things which is the watch and the Goyard bag and then I'm removing the Hermes Evelyn and then who knows if I'm ever gonna get a Birkin or a Kelly but moving right into what I am adding to this wish list so I've been thinking a lot about the things that I kind of want to invest in more. As I mentioned, I'm very 
content with my handbag collection at this time and don't really I'm not really missing anything or don't really need to add anything so I've kind of shifted my focus a little bit from handbags to fine jewelry. So I did mention that in one of my videos, I'll link it here for you, that I'm in my fine jewelry era. And that just means I'm gonna be investing a little bit more on rings and necklaces and bracelets, but in the more solid gold material. I've definitely picked up jewelry in the past and they've just tarnished, they've turned silver, and I just don't wear those things anymore. So I've kind of discovered a new section of jewelry which is fine jewelry and that just means that it is made with solid gold so it shouldn't tarnish and they are pieces that are meant to last forever and I think that kind of fits in with who I am like even the things that I buy in my wardrobe they're very like classic pieces that I can wear for many many years to come so yeah I started my fine jewelry journey last year and I've picked up quite a few things so I've got some necklaces and I've also got bracelets and I guess like the watch could count as jewelry but the one thing that is on my wish list for this year or maybe next year is potentially getting a ring and not just like any ring but I want to get an emerald ring I'll pop up a photo inspo here for you guys I've really been into Starling which is an LA based brand and they do these bespoke gem ring drops essentially they offer loose gems so rubies emeralds sapphires diamonds etc and they aren't set yet and you can essentially pick your settings and then they can custom make it for you so i want to get an emerald ring that is bezel set and i think that that will be just like the perfect piece that i can again pass along to future generations but also just wear every day and the second thing that is on the list is a bag i know i just kind of went on about like I don't need any new bags, but I do have a bag on this wish list, and it is from The Row. So The Row is a brand by the Olsen Twins, and it is definitely up my alley. I really like the minimalistic vibes and just the classic pieces that they offer. So I actually haven't seen this bag in person, and I don't know if it's actually something that I'm gonna get once I do see it, but I've been really into their slouch bag. So it's essentially a crossbody bag. I'm gonna put up a photo here, but it's a crossbody bag that is really close to your body and it is all leather. And I really like it because I think that it'll fit all of my essentials and it just looks really cool. Like if you pair it with a trench coat, with some trousers, I just think that it is the ultimate cool girl bag. The best part is that there's not really any branding and if you see that bag and you know the row, then you'll know what that bag is. But if you don't, then it kind of just looks like a regular leather crossbody bag and that's kind of what I really like about it. So I want to see this in person, but there's no rush. Like I'm not rushing to get this bag. There's not really a need for it right now. And I also think it's more of a fall winter bag. So if I get it, I might get it later in the year or even like early next year, but we will see. And yeah, that is it. That is everything that is on my updated wish list. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you have any questions for me please make sure to leave them in the comments down below and yeah let me know what's on your wish list i would love to know and i hope that you're having an amazing day bye you guys mm -hmm.